2019. New year, new ideas. Well, yeah, I got a bunch of new ideas. It doesn't mean I'm gonna actually do anything. Besides, it's rainy. Like, this is perfect weather to just lounge around and do nothing. Perfect weather to play PS2 games. Well, it's rainy days like these that remind me of the good times I had, you know, flying through the galaxy in Star Ocean and finding new dungeons in Final Fantasy XII. I love the PS2, and why not play some games right now? It's rainy day and no other better time to play an RPG. Well, we've got a ton of PS2 games to check out. Well, we're looking more specifically for RPGs. And, I mean, what else can we look for? We have Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Oh my god. Let's do it fast. Oh! Okay. Third Age. It's actually a really fun RPG that I didn't think I would have too much fun with. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. But the thing is, this takes place during the time, I believe, between... Return of the King and the Two Towers. Let me see. Uh, customize your hero with in-depth skill trees. Back in the day, being able to customize your your character in an RPG and see it physically change like weapons and armor, I love that. I was all into that in uh, in RPGs back in the days. But nowadays, all I really care about are the stats. Um, I mean, it does help and look really cool whenever you would be able to change out your armor and actually look different because you would feel that sense of progression like When you start off an adventure on an RPG You don't For me personally, I want to look at least like I've grown as a play as the play as the character has progressed I want to feel like that I'm still not at the beginning of the game with the same armor the same weapons even though you do get different weapons it just numbers and stats that increase I prefer to have a physical change on here. Um, yeah, Third Age is really fun. Um, and then obviously, I mean, strictly not speaking. <sighs> Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. I love the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 2 because you actually play as Snake. But Metal Gear Solid 3, I don't know, it's just got such a great story, it's got such a heartbreaking ending. Ugh, and... Actually, I don't know, I just love talking about Metal Gear Solid 3. Honestly, some of my favorite Metal Gear Solid games are probably Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, Snake Eater, or Subsistence, whichever one you want to do. I think Subsistence had, like, extra VR missions. Um, I have Snake Eater, so this was the first run of it. Um, and, uh... Uh, Peace Walker is one of my favorite Metal Gear handheld games. I think it it's the best of all the handhelds. I think Portable Ops and um, Acid, I think, was another um, uh, PSP uh, Metal Gear game. But I think Snake Eater 3, Peace Walker, and uh, more recently, I really like Metal Gear Solid 5. I just had this urge recently to want to go back and play it, but that game is huge. It's long. And then, obviously, Final Fantasy 12 have nothing but but I'm sure I have another copy somewhere uh, I put 200 plus hours into this game I remember back in the day I did because I love the setting the setting of evil East that they portrayed in Final Fantasy 12 a deserty in fact I talk about it in my top favorite games of all time do I, I think I do oh no it was tropical tropical top tropical areas uh, evil East, specifically for Final Fantasy 12 because of the deserty um, Arabian style that it took and I really enjoy that that scenario and on top of that the combat's really fun it played like an MMO where you have your auto attacks you can interrupt attacks or or not interrupt but queue attacks to queue uh, abilities like after an attack goes off so that you can continue on chaining these uh, these intricate uh, combos uh, but at the same time you had this system called the gambit system where you would indirectly manage party members that would trigger actions or abilities for them to do in order when uh, certain conditions are met. So, for example, let's say you had the spell protect wear off. One of you could have one of your your healers or your 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 mages, whatever you had a specific character's job to do. Um, you could have them uh, recast protect on the entire team. Or if your threshold HP is at below thirty percent, you could have them cast a, a curing spell or something like that. I really love the gambit system in Final Fantasy XII, and I'm surprised I haven't really seen that implemented in any other um, Final Fantasy game. And then we have the famous uh, 
Shin Megami Tensei a Nocturne game, uh, famous for the uh, featuring Dante from Devil May Cry's Capcom. Capcom's Devil May Cry. Uh, so you see that meme where it's like uh, Ann Knuckles or featuring Dante. This is where it's from. It's from this game, um, from Nocturne. This game is stupidly hard. I was only able to get a couple hours into this because of how difficult it is. It's not even fair. You really, really have to do a ton of grinding in it. And um, in my opinion, uh, the aesthetic of the game is really cool. Uh, you see the whole red and black um, kind of Shin Megami Tensei style thing uh, that uh, Atlas put out. And it's pretty hard to find. It's not expensive, but it's getting pretty rare. Uh, recently, I've noticed it goes probably for about 15 bucks. But if you can find it, uh, I definitely say add it to your Atlas collection. Um, I don't know, a red and black Atlas game. I'm not sure where I've seen that before. We have the Onimusha series. I have Onimusha 3 and uh, Dawn of Dreams. So specifically, let's talk about uh, Onimusha 3. Uh, this game, it played like any of the other uh, Onimusha games. Except this time it took place, I think, in Paris? Yeah. Eiffel Tower. And then this guy. He's that... Uh, He's the, uh, the professional, right? What's his name? Uh, the Onimusha series played kind of like the uh, Resident Evil games, um, just less horror and more focus on the action. Um, it did have the same stilted camera angle or the, 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 uh, the frozen camera angle. What is camera angles that you couldn't move? They were, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking out, but whatever. Um, and then you did collect different weapons, different armors, which, you know, as a kid back then, I really enjoyed that. But the most time I spent on an Unamusha game was uh, Dawn of Dreams. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Soki, the main character, is actually a playable character in the Tatsunoko vs. Capcom fighting game. And don't even get me started on fighting games. Um, so this game was one of the first games that I realized a PS2 had two discs. I knew that PS1 had multiple discs. There's four four disc games like Final Fantasy uh, 7 and uh, 8. Does 9 have four discs? It does. 9 has four discs. So I remember going to GameStop one day and I bought this game pre-owned and I'm like, oh my god, this game looks pretty cool. I'll check it out. And I go home and open it up and there's two discs. I'm like, what this is going to be a long game? The combat is really fun. It's very different from the uh, the rest of the Onimusha series. Um, Soki is one of those, you know, happy go lucky. He's like he's a he's a Titus clone, from Final Fantasy XII. So that's kind of his attitude. Um, but he's a badass at the same time. And you got this annoying side character that follows you around, and it's an annoying side character. But uh, I really enjoyed Onimusha: Dawn of Dreams, and I can't think of a better Onimusha game right now, honestly. And then, last over here is a uh, Star Ocean till the end of time. Um, this was the next game I realized I had a what well, there was two discs. Um, it's a Star Ocean game. It plays just like any of the other ones. It's uh, not is it random encounter? I believe it's random encounter. Um, but it takes you to a separate screen where it's actual uh, real time combat or, or RPG, a la Dark Cloud, Kingdom Hearts, where you actually have combos and that kind of stuff. The story is pretty interesting in this one, and it, um, you t play as a uh, Fate, I think is his name. Yeah, Fate. You play as Fate, and um, I guess he crash lands on a planet that is underdeveloped. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation, or pronunciation the correct um, terminology is, but there's these laws throughout the galaxy where you're not allowed to introduce advanced technology into planets or galaxies or civilizations that have not yet caught up to the the advancements in technology because i don't know you don't want to throw their life out of like chaos into chaos or whatever like that it's some um, some it's pretty interesting it's a pretty interesting concept um but fate gets crash landed on a planet that's been underdeveloped and he's got all this technology on him and i gotta try to get back um and then the story happens and it's pretty cool i like fate as a character i prefer um kent 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 what the main character from Star Ocean uh, 2. Um, in the United States, it was Star Ocean Second Story. And then it got remade into the PSP Star Ocean Second Something. I don't know. But I like him more as a character because he actually has really good character development. Ugh. 
Well, I'm pretty sure that's not all I have. Um, that's right. Um, my drawer. I have like four other um, and the Dark Cloud games, Dragon Quest. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here is the rest of the PS2 game. So. Dark Cloud. What can be said about this game? I've already done a kind of let's play. I don't know, it's probably privated because it was pretty cringy. But Dark Cloud was one of the so the game that got me into PlayStation 2 RPGs was Dark Cloud. I remember my uncle. Um, he, uh, my uncle Pablo. I went over to my uh, to his house one day and he was playing um, this game I had never seen before. Um, it was my probably one of my one of the first introductions I had to the PlayStation 2 and um, he was playing this game uh, this this elf I thought I thought um, no no what the heck is this guy's name Nora Noran main character uh, Toan that was his name Toan let me double check <laughs> I can't believe I remembered his name yeah here it is Toan 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 whatever you want to call him this kid I thought Toan was an elf because of the uh, the way his hat's colored right here, uh, it looks like elf ears, so I thought they were trying to copy Link from The Legend of Zelda. Um, so, this elf kid was running around a jungle, it wasn't a jungle, it was more like a forest, and he comes up to this uh, snake, and I guess in order to, to and at the time, uh, I didn't know what was going on, so a cutscene happens where uh, he encounters this uh, silver serpent snake dragon type of thing. My uncle puts the controller down, he puts his hands behind his back, he's like, cool. I made it to here, and it's a quick time event. He's like, oh shoot, so he's pressing the buttons, he gets it 100% correct, but, uh, so Toan jumps on the back of the snake and like stabs him in the head, but the sword bounces off. And so, um, the snake is like, he like, Toan like jumps off of the snake, the snake's head, and he like rears up, and he like attacks him, and the screen goes red, and it says game over. And as a kid, I'm like, what? What? So apparently, um, in order to kill the, uh, the Silver Serpent, I forgot what the boss was called, you needed a specific weapon, um, the snake, I don't know, it looked like a tomato, it looks like a tomato, if I can find a picture of it, I'll throw it up, but it's really nice looking blade, but you only ever need it for that boss, and it's pretty weak otherwise, um, but yeah, that was my first introduction to the Dark Cloud series, not only the Dark Cloud series, but the um, PlayStation 2 RPG as a whole. Um, I think I've already talked about this game before. Maybe in my top favorite games of all time. It was right after I talked about Dragon Qu uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, Kobe's Journey. Yeah, try saying that five times fast. Um, I mentioned Dragon Quest VIII because it was one of my favorite RPGs. Not only, not only did I pass it on PS2, where I put ton of hours in the Dragovian trials trying to get the armor or the the uh, the costume uh, for the hero um, they also came out with the 3ds version and the 3ds version had uh, has two extra characters I believe um, and it's two extra characters and they join your your quest uh, with uh, extra side stories and now what they can do is um, specifically the guy he's able to uh, tame monsters easier and that's one thing that i loved about this game was it kind of had the dragon warrior aspect also implemented into this so the pokemon style where you collect monsters breed monsters you battle them in dungeons or in, in uh pokemon battles um but yeah dragon quest 8 is such a great game uh there's this game and then this i don't really like final fantasy 10 too it's pretty cringy it's very cringy um, more cringy than 10 if that's even possible but 10 is still holds a soft spot in my heart because um, over at my grandma's house one day I saw it Final Fantasy 10 just lying around um, I didn't know whose it was I took it home it turns out it was my cousin's I guess he'd left it there for whatever reason and during the time I had it I passed it and I loved it that chocobo challenge where you have to get beat the chocobo race in zero seconds if that even makes sense so what you have to do is um, you're on a, you're on a chocobo and you have to I think pop these balloons. Any every balloon you pop takes off a certain amount of time from your takes off a certain amount of seconds from your overall time. If you get if you run into seagulls, uh, it adds time. So your goal is to not get hit by the seagulls, is to collect all the balloons so that by the time you reach the end the end of the race, you're at zero seconds. Try doing that 
as if you're controlling a wet noodle. Like, it, it, it's, it's hard, and it's PS2 controls, and it was the most frustrating thing I've done in an RPG. One of the most frustrating things I've done in an RPG. I think the hardest thing I've... Anyway. Um, one of the most frustrating things I've done in an RPG. Early PS2 controls. Ugh! And you needed to do all that to get one of the sigils to get uh, Tidus' ultimate weapon, I believe. The Kalad Bold, or the Cabbage Bold. I always call it Cabbage Bold because I thought that was really dumb. These masterpieces... This masterpiece, um, yeah, so I have two copies, I don't know why, um, Final Fantasy XII, I've already talked about it, and then, uh, these games are just garbage, why don't I care about Kingdom Hearts anymore, I used to be such a big fan, and then, uh, Random Wild Arms 3, uh, this game is pretty cool, the music is fantastic, I love the music in this game, and, um, the whole, uh, I think there's like four stories, three stories uh, that you can start off with these characters and then in the end, all the characters that you choose end up meeting together. Um, yeah, I really like Wild Arms 3. The music is fantastic. Uh, the Wild Arms series, uh, I only played uh, 1, 3, and uh, the, the one on the PSP, it was, like, it, was, it, was, it was like a strategy RPG. I played that a little bit. I got kind of bored of that one. Um, but Wild Arms 3 has great music. The Wild Arms series in general just has fantastic music. And now the greatest PS2 game of all time is what we're going to take a look at today. So Dark Cloud 2 um, was my uncle's favorite game. And if it wasn't for him, I would not have been introduced to Level 5. I would not have been introduced to Rogue Galaxy. Dark Cloud 2 is one of those games that I just have a lot of fond memories with. And I'll always remember my uncle for for introducing me to this series. Um, I think I even have a have the strategy guide. Man, this is classic. Uh, just so many good memories. Jeez, I remember all of this. It's a it's a fantastic game, man. If it wasn't for what the heck. Art and information disc for PlayStation 2. For all press inquiries, person's name, phone number, person's email address. What the heck is this? Now, I got my copy secondhand from some store in the mall that overcharges for retro games just playing on the fact that, oh, this is your childhood and it's old and so it must be expensive. So yeah, I got my copy that way, but in that it came with this art inf in in and information disc for all press inquiries? What does that mean? Let's figure this out. All right, so I don't know if you can hear that. But, so it's reading the disc. Uh, okay, the sound is gone. It was doing like a skip reading error and it's still reading the disc. Oh, there, it played. Please insert a PlayStation or PlayStation 2 format disc. Okay, so apparently that is not a formatted PS PlayStation disc. Um, so one other option is to plug it into the computer the thing is, my uh, my computer doesn't have a disc reader, and I have an external disc reader under my bed, so we're gonna have to. Now we're gonna get down to the bottom of this. So we can't play it on the PS2. Obviously, it's not gonna work on PS1. Let's uh, figure this out. <sighs> okay, so I have a ton of stuff under my bed, and it's all messy. It's super dusty. I just got to try to figure out where the disk drive is because my computer doesn't have a disk drive. I have to buy an external one and I hadn't used that for years because who buys CD-ROMs anymore? I mean, everything's all digital. You just go on the website and download it, especially games. Anyway, that's beside the point. So, <sighs> wish me luck. This side. Ow. Okay. I can't see it. Oh, wait. I have so much stuff. <clears throat> oh, it's all dusty. <coughs> Oh my god. Ow! 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 
Ow! Oh, wait. Ugh. Oh, God. <sighs> I really need to clean up through here. Pull up more. I got it. I got it. Good. <sighs> Super multi. I got it. All right, so we figured out how to plug everything in. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the disc into the computer and see if we can bring anything up. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, select and choose what happens with Google devices. Uh, okay, so, uh, 2003, this information from 2003, let's go ahead and dot doc file. I don't think I have, uh, I can't open it. Uh, notepad? No, I can't read it. Okay. Analog memory launch date, February 18, 2002. Uh, T14. Teen. Oh, man. Um, Maximilian is a young inventor with the heart of a hero who always lets curiosity get the better of him. Monica is a skilled warrior from the future and master magic who favors graceful sword and possesses a magical bracelet. One day Maximilian, who has never set foot outside of his town, decides it is time to fulfill his desire and see the rest of the world. When Monica, a figure from the future, realizes he is in danger, he discovers a secret meant to destroy the outside world. She uses time travel to visit Maximilian in the present world. Together they embark on a mysterious journey into the future to prevent an evil madman from destroying the world. In the process they find themselves assisting a diverse group of villagers battling monsters, restoring the world, and unlocking secrets that will lead them to their ultimate demise. Sony Computer Entertainment America, Dark Cloud 2, Fa. Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Maximilian, uh, Dark Cloud 2 is a sequel to one of the best-selling role-playing games on the role-playing games on the PlayStation 2, uh, engaging up to 100 total hours, 100 total hours of gameplay, and that's if you're, like, just doing the story. Uh, monsters riddle dungeons, lands ready to be rebuilt, explore two different characters, Maximilian or Monica, multiple attack forms, special abilities, upgradable weaponry. Maximilian is an inventor with a handy wrench. Monica is a strong female lead character, can use magic to destroy her enemies. The new invention system allows Maximilian to carry a camera around the environment and take pictures of anything he sees in the hopes that he will create inventions that will assist him in exploration combat. Okay, so... Crash Bat... What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Crash Bandicoot worked. Overview fact sheet. Microsoft Word 9.0. Uh. Okay. Crash Bandicoot warped. Um, what the heck? So in this disc, it talks about the overview of what Dark Cloud 2 is, but it's got a reference to Crash Bandicoot warped? Wait. Okay, so now, I don't have a dot dot, uh, I don't have any, 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 uh, a dot dot document reader, dot doc reader. I don't have word. So, the next thing we got to check out is artwork. Box art. Oh, this is all like high resolution stuff. Uh, I can open this. I can open this in Psy. Oh, that's so awesome! Oh my gosh.
I have a press disc. This is the stuff that that level five were square. Uh, level five and uh, Sony would send out to. Uh, whoops. This is the stuff that they would send to the press, like Game Informer. Um, uh, play. Um, I don't know IGN. I think IGN was around. Yeah, IGN, freaking Gamespot. <gasps> Oh my gosh! I have high resolution pictures. Oh, I can't read this. Color mode is only accepted in. Uh, I'll figure that one out later. Screenshots. These are JPEGs. What if these are like early screenshots? Okay, so so far I'm not seeing anything that's totally different. Nope. This is the final build of Dark Cloud. This is exactly how it looks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The beginning of the game? Yeah. So this is the final, a final build that they had sent, like just information um, to, I guess, magazines so that they can have these pictures to publish in the magazines. That is so freaking cool. And I've had that disc forever and I finally know what it is. Weird, I never thought to put it in here. There you have it. Mystery solved with the Art and Information, the Dark Cloud 2 Art and Information disc. I've had this for a long time and I never, I think I did one time try to put it in, but the computer I was using at the time, for some reason, wasn't reading my, um, uh, the, uh, the disk drive. It wasn't connecting or it wasn't able to, um, read any disks, the computer I was using at the time. But now, finally, I don't know why I didn't think of doing this earlier when I got the new computer, but uh, yeah, for all press inquiries, contact this person through phone number or email. I guess those were press people or... Those were um, uh, representatives of Level 5 uh, North American branch or whatever that you could ask them for information uh, regarding Dark Cloud 2 just before its release. And I have that. Oh my gosh. This is super cool. So that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Um, what are some of the gaming mysteries you've always wondered? I recently just discovered that the reason why they didn't finish Xenogears was actually because... They had new people on, on the staff, and not only did they have to have a two-year time limit to uh, develop games for Square, um, but they had new people. So on top of developing a game in two years, they had to train new people. And, you know, gaming mysteries like that have always confounded me and have always interested me and have always found interesting. And I solved the gaming mystery on my own today. I'm pretty happy. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.